Um, I personally know that I've been told countless times that Australia has an ageing population. I know that I've been told countless times in various ways and often with the best intentions at heart that young people do not care and I know that I've been told countless times that our generation is lazy, entitled and naive. But this is just another misinformed myth. It is irrefutably not true. Admittedly, young people may not be as experienced as some of our older citizens, but the only way to gain experience is through experiencing. So, because there are about 100 people in this room today, I'm going to propose two steps for positive change that, if we all committed to, would produce 200 instances of positive change within this room alone, not even including any extras. Because the reality of the situation is, if we want to break the impression that young people are merely at the fringes of our national interests, that we do not care, and that our opinions are not worth consideration, then unfortunately, and it shouldn't be this way, but we are going to have to forcefully break it. If we want to create a world that is more inclusive, more tolerant, more trusting, and more supportive, we are going to have to follow these steps. The first step is that we all have to vote. As you all know, the US presidential campaign is in full swing in the United States at the moment. But what you might not know much about is a phenomenon known as the Blue Wall. This is a collection of states in the US that guarantees, no matter who the Democrat, Democratic candidate is, 257 Democratic electoral votes. And you know how many electoral votes it takes to win the presidency? 270. This blue wall is comprised, comprised predominantly of Latino, Hispanic, and young voters. It is this collection of about seven states that makes it very hard, in fact, pretty much impossible for a Republican win. That means that the Republicans, the American equivalent of the Australian Liberal Party, pretty much have to win every other state to even have the same level of chance as winning, at winning the White House as the Democrats. So whatever your political affiliation may be, what everyone can agree is that this blue wall is an extremely powerful force in deciding the results of the US election. However, a similar united front does not exist within Australia, and even despite our compulsory voting laws. This is predominantly due to one major misconception that young people have. Yes, despite common belief, you are not automatically enrolled to vote when you turn 18. Yes, you have to do it yourself. And yes, it is a rather lengthy process. Indeed, there is a general belief amongst analysts that this process is made lengthy on purpose by uh, the Australian Liberal Party, as it has been revealed that approximately two thirds of young voters are either Labor or Greens voters. But I digress, because it does not matter what your political views are. In order to make this democracy of ours as healthy and representative as possible, we need all of our citizens to be voting. Because as YouTuber Friendly Geordies termed in his discussion of this issue, the youth vote is the sleeping giant of this, of this nation's political life. As revealed by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, just 78.5% of Australians between the ages of 18 to 25 are actually enrolled to vote, with this being reduced to a mere 60% amongst eligible 18 to 19 year olds. So, we need to wake up. Yes, the process of enrolling is rather frustrating, but we need to be able to have our say when it is available. We need to be able to form our own wall, whatever colour it may be. Because if just 2% of the 6% of, of, of Australians not enrolled to vote stop the process out, at least six marginally held seats would be firmly decided. In turn, this would have the potential to change the party in power at the next federal election, potentially giving us our fifth prime minister in five years. So for all of you out there today, don't only engage in making change on a grassroots level. Don't only express your opinions through angry Facebook rants. Enroll to vote. Fuck your friends to enrol. Combine your powers of nagging and procrastination by messaging at least one friend with this message tonight. Because if we truly want our government to be the rep representation of us, the Australian people, we need all of our people to actually engage in its democratic process. In doing this, we would truly add the voice of youth to the Australian political agenda. 
so that issues like marriage equality, gender equality, climate change, privatisation, university fees, all of the issues that I know you are so passionate about would finally be fully represented, not just by people over the age of 25. And if you're 16 to 17, sign up now so you don't have to worry about it in the future. Moreover, if you are 18 now, you only have two weeks left to enrol, so please get a move on. If you procrastinate from doing your homework just once tonight, enrol to vote online. Um, <laughs> the next step for positive change comes down to a single question. We need to ask ourselves, who am I, and recognise how it affects our actions. Because the reality is that at the moment, most of our societal issues stem from people not questioning their own beliefs enough and not recognising or caring about their privileged perspective. So often this exertion of privilege is highly harmful to those people that it marginalises or oppresses, or without you even realising that you have any. Gender privilege, class privilege, racial privilege, ability privilege, straight privilege and cisgender privilege are just some of the privileges that structure and govern our everyday interactions, emotions and routines. So in moving towards a future where society is more accepting and moreover more comfortable for everyone to live in, ask yourself this very simple question. Who am I? Take a moment to examine your own characteristics now. What makes you, you? If you looked at yourself and found that you were of Caucasian descent, if you found that you were male, if you found that you're a person without a disability, if you are straight, if you are cisgender, or if your gender identity aligns with the gender you were assigned at birth, you possess at least some level of societal privilege. In fact, pretty much everyone in this room here today possesses at least some level of privilege, including me, in varying degrees, of course. But this is not an attack. I'm not asking you to feel guilty about your privilege. All I'm asking is that you recognise this privilege when disagreeing with others. Ask who am I before launching into why they are wrong or forming steadfast opinions about something. Because there are no absolutes and chances are that you may be just trying to make decisions and speak for a group of people who you hold power over. So question your perspective. Ask who am I and make society more inclusive for everyone. Because this is not a case of political correctness gone mad. Believe it or not, the effects of people thrusting their privilege onto others affects everything from our economy to how long it takes us to get ready in the morning. It even affects music. We all have different tastes in music. Heavy metal, indie rock, pop. Recently, Beyonce released her visual album, Lemonade. It tells a tale of, yes, infidelity, but also much more than that. It is an album that proudly celebrates a black female narrative. In this album, more than ever before, Beyonce has creatively explored the issues that continue to affect her everyday life and the lives of many other African-American females every day. But since I first listened and watched this visual album, I've heard, a lot of, and, I've heard and seen a lot of anti-Beyonce sentiment. And this is a prime example of where we need to ask ourselves, who am I? Let's say you simply only really like acoustic music and you just don't really like the genre of music that Beyonce typically sings to. This is fine. But here is an example of what is not fine. It would not be fine if you disliked Beyonce's new album or indeed her as a person because she was too sassy and you didn't like the way she was idolised as a queen. The reason this is different to the previous response is because, in this case, you were criticising the album based on its political discourses, its messages of intersectional feminism and wider racial equality. Furthermore, the term sassy is similar to the term bossy in the fact that it is often used to subdue uh, strong, unapologetic fem females, as opposed to the male equivalents of strong leadership or decisiveness. Especially, sassy is commonly used to describe women of colour who have strong opinions or do not apologise for what they are thinking. Discussion of these terms may seem harmful, or as, sorry, discussion of these terms as harmful may seem silly, but they are silencing and oppressive. They promote women to a position of submission. So let's ask ourselves why some people might perceive Beyonce as too sassy. 
Is she too outspoken? And if so, in what way? Too outspoken as a woman? Too outspoken as an African-American? Or too outspoken as an African-American woman? Because, let's be honest with ourselves, Kendrick Lamar, who advocates for many of the same issues through rap as Beyonce does, whose songs Mad City and All Right have become the soundtrack of the black power movement in the United States, does not face the same level of hate. So this is where we need to ask ourselves, who am I? Because the common response that I've heard is, I guess I just don't really relate. And this is the truth. We do not relate because chances are that this music was not made for us. We do not relate and so we dislike. Because in our society, the privileges our Caucasian, straight, cisgender, and more often than not, male identity. We are not used to not relating to something because, well, pretty much everything is made for us. But we may say, shouldn't music be made for everyone? So back to my steps for positive change. Because if we asked ourselves, who am I in this situation? Maybe we, we, we would realize that this very statement is an overt example of exerting our privilege. Because although in a perfect world we would be right and music would be made for everyone, this is not a perfect utopia. So much of the music made and released these days has undertones of being made for certain demographics or groups of people in our society. And part of the power of Beyonce is that she fills the void left by this music. She voices the challenges, opinions, and struggles of the black female identity, a voice that through time and space has previously been silenced. And whilst we could continue, what this serves to show is that if we ask ourselves exactly why we don't like Beyonce, perhaps we would be one step closer to recognizing our own privilege. So next time we find ourselves uttering a statement starting with, I hate, or I dislike, let's ask ourselves why. Let's ask ourselves, who am I? And how does that affect what I am saying right now? Because if you are discrediting anything or anyone based upon who they are, even if it is not on purpose, or even if it is a joke, then I think we can all agree this is hardly making moves towards a more accepting world. There is no shame or guilt that you should feel if you are privileged. However, you just need to recognise it. You should not feel ashamed that you are straight, that you are male, that you are cisgender, and the list could go on. However, what you can do is recognize this level of privilege within our society. Recognize it, how it may be affecting your outlook on an issue, and how you might be trying to represent or speak for another group of people. So this is where we need to come back to my two steps of positive change that I have proposed to you today, vote and question. Because although everyone is entitled to their opinion, you also need to recognise and remember the position of privilege that your view comes from and who you are trying to represent with your opinion. By challenging your own views, we will create a more accepting world, a better place for everyone to live in, not just the majority. It is these small moments of reflection and recognition combined with actively joining in with our community, whether that be through volunteer work or through the democratic process of voting, this will result in wide-scale change. So whatever your views are, at the very least, vote and question. Because as we stand on the precipice of our futures as caretakers of the world, peace, tolerance, empathy, respect, connectedness and inclusivity are truly ideas worth spreading.